Hello and welcome back, dear friends. It's me, Odo, and I am back in my campaign of EU4. Ah, uh, no, not EU4. I'll find a kingmaker. It is. <laughs> um, last time I said we will get all the stuff from the sycamore tree to um, Oleg, and I'm nearly at Oleg, but. Uh, the Guardian of the Bloom is intercepting me, so I fought before um, selling everything. I will um, start recording. You can um, be part of the story. Okay. Greetings. The nymph's tender voice comes to you softly. The scent of flowers and evening dew is the in this dark hour, I had not even dreamed of encountering someone in these lands who could stand against the one who blights me. But you appeared, and you brought hope along with you. With the strength of the fog fading, I am able to show you the way to the Stag Lord's fortress. Go there, slay our enemy before he can strike another blow. Okay. Now we know where the fort of the Stag Lord is. Yes. Will you help me in the battle? Of course not. I cannot. Yeah. What what did I say? My power is barely enough to make a slight tear 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 through the veil of fog, keeping the way open to you. It's all I can do to help. Yeah, that's really nice. What happens after I defeat the Stag Lord? Will I ever see you again? I feel so. And you would, would you like to see me again? Then yes, of course, I'll come to you once the Tormentor is gone for good. I really hope to have a chance to show you the true beauty of these lands, the meadows, the flowers, you cannot count on me. I'll deal with the Stag Lord and his minions. No one will even harm you anymore. Ah. I'll set off to the Stag Lord's fortress as soon as I'm ready. Let's do it like that. And another nymph's gift. Okay. Should you lose my heart, we'll stop with you. But should you win, the sun shall rise once more over the in its rays, in the ring dance of blooming life, we shall meet again. I leave you a small gift, a token of hope, and the reward that awaits you after all this hardship. Farewell. No, take care. Okay. Okay. And she's gone. Oh, okay. We are tired. This is an advantage of taking, um, what's her name, Chaffel with you. If you have her with you in the party, she never tires as an undead. So there is no time when everyone wants to sleep. So you can go on even uh, if all of the others are fatigued. All of them are fatigued, you have to rest. Uh, this saves a lot of time, actually. Um, show me your wares, Oleg. Let's make an offer. We have a lot of stuff that no one needs. I'm really, I'm really, really happy about this button. I mean, this is so many things that we would have to click on. So, and then we just get rid of all this as well. If it's not magic, it's not worth keeping. So, not in weight, but in... Like here. Okay, the magic stuff we'll keep for, for the moment. We have a lot of daggers. Okay, what's that? Forge. 
No, we keep it. Okay, what's that? A Tongi. What is the some kind of war eggs? I'm I'm not sure, it's probably a dwarven war egg or something like something like that, but it's one handed, so probably not. A skimitar plus one. That's probably okay. I think Ragonga like that. What's that? A great sword plus one. To this plus one. Um yeah, I think Amiri's one is is better. Okay, we have here the Nymph's Gift. This necklace gives its wearer plus two dodge bonus to AC against ranged attacks. Mm, nice. And a plus one ring of protection. We don't sell this, of course. What's that? A wand of magic missiles. Cast level three, so it's two magic missiles, which is good. I think. And we've got a lot of stuff here. I'm not sure if we should sell all this. I think these can be sold later on um, more expensive. Also these and these. Uh, there are some recipes. And these are part of a uh, well, these are parts of. Now we kept the mitradic. Okay, uh, what's that? A crumpled letter. Ah, we can. We can sell this. I don't think that we need it anymore. Okay. For well, 3000 gold pieces. Yay. We want something from you. I'm not sure. I mean, he has plus one weapons. Uh, let, let's sell it first. And. On when you're not online. We have to That's easy. No, stop, stop. Casting the rest. I failed to capture the creature alive. He attacked me and was killed. Well, this is not the best outcome, but I think it will be good enough for Jamandi. Take this as a reward for your help. Yay. Send a word to Restog and let them consider how they might return the favor. Yeah. They sent me some troops. To get this um, bandit done with, I mean. Once again, I thank you for your help. I'll remain here until my men recover from their wounds. Meanwhile, we'll help guard the trading post and fight off any bandits should they return. Yeah. Working all your plans and endeavors. Okay. Footsteps. So, this is our personal stash. We can put all these things inside. I'm not sure if I want to keep this or sell this. I'm not, I, I don't know. Um, yeah. If I don't sell it, then I can keep it here for a while. So, okay. Um, like this. We will, we will see which of these will be good. Inventory, we now see also these guys. Hey, where is Harim? I rescued him. He 
should be here as well. Like you. You have a plus one scimitar, so you don't need a plus one scimitar. But you don't need to have it healed either, because you need your second hand to um, cast spell. Okay, we have these things. Okay. This doesn't do anything, I think. Yeah, why not? And we've got a ring of protection plus one. Okay. Let's give it to you. Not to you. Yeah, I mean, she really don't need it. You can only wear one ring plus one. So, okay, what's that? An agile light pick. What does agile mean? Agile weapons are usually well balanced and responsive. With the weapon finesse, it can choose to apply a dexterity modifier of the damage roll. Okay, so this is a light pick that can use dexterity. Okay, we can sell this cold iron dagger plus one. We'll keep this as a plus one. I really don't know if we this. She can't handle it. He could. No, he doesn't. He can't handle it either. So let's sell it. We keep this. Great sword plus one. I mean. Now makes 13 to 27 damage with this sword. Give that to me. Why? She gives thirteen to twenty-three damage. Uh, yeah, why should I keep it? So let's sell it. I don't think that we will have anyone who will wield a two-handed weapon. It's it's not as good as the ginormous sword, so let's sell it. Muta plus one, we already have one, and a Tongi plus one. Is there an info what the Tongi is? Nope. Okay. That's sad. So this week. This will keep as well. Let's go to see. We are not fully done with the sycamore. We probably should, should do the sycamore before we... Where is Harim? There he is. Morek. Show me your wares. Okay. Arim, how about you joining me? Really? You don't want to join me? Stupid war. We have a better priest anyway than you. Hm. Don't need you. Yeah, okay, bye. So, let's move down. 
Let's get all the rest out of the sycamore. Let's leave. So, okay. Should we take these two with us again? I mean, they are nice. Instead of Jaffel and Amiri, probably. Or instead of Jaffel and Lindsay, uh, of Amiri and Lindsay. Or Jaffel and Lindsay. Amiri is quite good. Valerie is quite good. We need a priest. I really like Chaffle, but I mean, she doesn't have anyone for us. So, <laughs> so Lindsay or Amiri or Valerie? Nah, not Valerie. No, what? So, except we need to level them up. Like now. I don't think this is nice to read about the Soul Eaters. So, level up. You are a Magus. I think Magus is such a stupid thing anyway. He's not a fighter and not a, a wizard, or probably he's both the sorcerer and a fighter in one person. And he doesn't do anything good. He doesn't get anything. Oh, plus one here. Okay, um... He's doing... Spells with charisma, but... Well, dexterity... Let's take... He's doing damage with strength anyway. So. Okay. Uh, what do we do here? Use magic device, of course. Um, Athletic, why not? And. Like perception. Everyone needs perception. We got two more spells. Ooh, level two spell. Nice. As we do touch attacks, like, why not take frigid touch? And we need touch attack deals 46 points of cold damage and causes the target to be staggered. Yeah, why not? Evocation. Is he good at evocation? I mean, we could take something like blur. Or mirror image. So, one attack spell and like one defense spell. Hmm. Or glitter dust. I mean, glitter dust is nice. To see invisible things, but I'm not sure how how often we will find something invisible here. So blur is good to um, as uh, effortless armor. What does this do? Armor you wear no longer reduces your speed. You also reduce the armor's armor check penalty by one plus one of the five castle levels. Nice. Mirror image. Yeah, that's also good. I don't want these things. I want things with touch. <sighs> Web. Nah. 
So it's effortless armor or blur, I think. Or probably both of them. Which is also okay. Hmm. Okay, let's do her. So she's level two wizard, level one rogue. So let's take the rogue next. A rogue talent, yay. So dexterity or intelligence? Hmm. Interesting. Let's get a let's get the back up and next to int. Okay. Um seven points. This speaks for the int because then it's nine points. So, okay. Okay, that's that. Um, do we need persuasion? Don't think. Well, I also don't think that we need athletics. I mean, it's strength based. Um, could take a load or something. Okay, can you observe uh, plus four bonus on perception, combat trick, nah, fast, uh, that's probably okay. Okay, this, these are, we get rid of confused, shaken, or sickened if we can do a sneak attack. With a melee attack. Uh, yeah. Forget it. Skill focus. No reactions. Opponents damaged by the character's sneak attack can't make attacks of opportunity for one round. Hmm. Hmm. Iron Guts gives us a bonus on poison and oh, something like that. This she will disarm traps. It's probably good to have this. And she gets evasion. Evasion is really great. Okay. Let's move here. I mean, to get to the. Where is it? We have to go down there anyway, so. Yeah, let's do this this small thing. So my time is out. Oh, that's like this. Interesting. We walked across the heave a long time. 
Yet no sight sprang up before your our eyes. My, by turns we discovered a verdant lowland with several nearby springs streaming down behind another hillside, and then, in the distance in the center of the lowland among the bush, there stood a single dry tree, a true giant, magnificent outline resembled an animal's paw glowing at the sky. Uh -uh. I think I can remember this, but what was truly remarkable, the flat landscape was dotted by mysterious dark humps. They were piled about the height of a man and scattered around in abundance. Okay, we determined that we should explore the lowlands. We had more important things. Well, go there. We are adventurous. The further we tracked, the softer the land became. Step by step, leaf grass gave way to moss, low growing shrubs and ferns, then sloshy puddles of stinky swamp water. The muddy ground sucked at our feet, and soon our party was jumping from hassock to hassock. <clears throat> Finally, we reached the first group of mysterious humps and learned they were no mere hills but dugout dwellings. We moved with great care towards the center of the lowland, and there the real swamp began. On the way towards the mysterious giant tree, we saw the foggy outline of another hut. This one much bigger and surrounded by small clay statues. So we found a temple. We examined the surrounding dwellings. We should not retreat. We, we would not retreat and move. I was forward. What the whole tree determined. Yeah, let's examine the thing. Inside the dugouts were frowsy and dark, darker than holes and filled with absolute desolation, so there is no one here. There were no windows in these mud walls, no furniture or other homely items except for the odd piece of tattered wicker. But every dwelling had a large hollow dug right in the center of the third floor, like a fire pit, put but taking up the greater part of the space. We were filled with standing water and reeked beyond description. So it was like uh, Bogarts or something. These um, frog people. We moved with great care towards the center of the lowland, and there the real swarm. Uh, so, yeah. We would not retreat and moved on. Yeah. Okay. We walked slowly. No, we don't have the bard with us. We walked slowly, carefully choosing our way, keeping to drier ground as much as possible. But the further we went, the more difficult it became. And soon we were wading waist deep through the detail. Cat tails, frogs croaked loudly as we peered anxiously into the cloudy water, struggling to make out what shadows flitted along the bottom. And the Octavia staggered, spit out an O, and flailed her arms. She made a wrong step and, unable to pull out her foot, she called out loudly and began to sink into a wild green slush. Okay. Latix 14, she's got a plus zero. Okay. Why the, did she fall in? She's the only one with no athletics. We hurried to rescue, sensing that time was short. It has often been said that a fool in haste takes the slowest path. In the commotion, one of us slipped and went under the wild water and another tripped against him. Then grab the third as not to fall and drag him down. And meanwhile, poor Octavia just stood there, thinking ever deeper as we flung. Okay. But we've got a plus nine here, and we just have a DC 15. So, yeah. We succeeded. Yay. Finally, we managed to get back on solid ground. Though we feared for Slarty Part Fast. Followed some of this that disgusting water. Water. Okay. Okay. The insatiable bog gurgled hungrily after us, but we didn't look back. So 
home and very we finally made it back to solid ground and the palace of thoughts rose before our eyes. A spacious hut made of mud like the rest, but decorated with the with apples, bones, cattail spikes and snail shell. <sighs> oh. In front of the palace was a wide and shallow reservoir. Its green water reflected the leaves of huge ferns and primitive clay figurines. The buzzing of gnats was nearly deafening. We were not far to the center of the swamp, and steady path led there through the thick bushes. As it, as it's at its end, that tall, dry tree stretched mightily upwards, clawing at the firmament. Okay, knowledge world. Hmm, we've got a plus 12. Have we examined the clay figurines, trying to fathom who they might portray? Okay. Goggle eyes, flat heads with no necks, ears or chins, ugly long legs, unnaturally bent. These sculptures could only be the work of bogarts. Ah, huh. as I said, the frog people. Primitive, cruel, boggart tribes had inhabited the forms of Erin and Aviston. Yeah, since the olden days. Pitiless swaddled and to each other, they were led by the darker instincts of their insane priests. They are known to grow young, to grow young, dry in the pools inside the houses. Okay, we peeked inside the hut, we moved forward, yeah. let's peek inside the hut, why not? Hey, we found a shortfall. The palace was twice the height of other huts, and its entrance was wide enough that three could walk a breath. The walls were decorated and unknown builder had scratched drawings in the clay, but it was still wet. Faded scroll depicted huge amphibians boring smaller figures. <sighs> oh, some frog had it, others not. Three of the four rooms boasted large holes filled with water, just like the other dwellings. Though there here there were steps descending into them into the dirt. In the furthest room we found equipment decorating the walls. Leather armor spares club. To our surprise, a number of items were well preserved. The hut was clearly deserted, so we felt no shame in taking some of it with us. Well, of course not. It's our land, so it's ours. We found 137 gold coins. They probably left in a hurry. We moved forward, seeing we'd drawn some near our goal. Okay. Yeah, it was ever so lovely to walk once again along the well-trodden path. Our soaked clothes imagined being, being dry and our mood at once lifted. The bushes that bordered the path seemed to, have, to wave at us admirably. With their juicy green leaves and shiny bright red berries, a fresh wind puffed away the rotten smell and it finally felt like the swamp might nearly behind might be nearly behind us. But then the wind stopped blowing and the thorny branches continued to move and we heard a loud shout. Octavia, again her, who was watching our rear, pointed a searching crawling wall of green, filling in the path behind us. The surrounding thicket was coming to life. Its branches reached out a soft swishing sound, drops of sap oozed from their thorns, gleaming in the emerald dusk. The path was disappearing, there was no way back, and the clear space ahead was clearing. Okay. Mobility. Or strength. Okay, probably we'll take the mobility then. We ran forward. As fast as our legs would carry us. Mm, we've got a plus nine, so it's seven and above. We've got more than 50% chance. And we succeeded.
As any experienced traveler can tell you, sometimes you walk and sometimes you run. The branches snatched at our backpacks and clothes and the sprout tangled at our feet. But we slipped their grasp and were too quick and we gained experience. Ah, oh, this looks like, like a nice tree. Finally, after what seemed an endless trek, we came upon the gigantic tr dry tree that had so intrigued us from the beginning. Lo and behold, we saw an idol cut in its trunk. A huge, hard, free-eyed toad, its googly eyes, made it look both cruel and dumb, almost idiotic. Its muscle hung half open, sharp toothed with several hanging tongues. Deep brown streaks oozed from the corners of its mouth. Okay. Right. So, law religion. We've got a plus 12. Yeah, we tried to glean what sort of idol it might be. What we failed? Really? We rolled a 2. Ugh. I mean, I don't want to do a law good thing. But I don't want to do an, a chaotic evil thing either. Some of these slanty but first grabbed the dragonfly and held it in front of her mouth. What? What? But what is this? While we were examining the idol, a large bright blue dragonfly came out of a hollow in the tree, sat invitingly on the very tip of one of our noses. Okay, neutral. We fought better of interfering with the sinister idol and continued our journey. Hmm. Okay, we don't want to destroy it because, I mean, it's good to destroy it. And we are evil. I mean, we are lawful evil, but I don't care about this this uh, evil god bogarts. <clears throat> This. I mean, we won't do it anyway. Failed. I heard a wet crunch and I winced before I could look. I turned around, hearing a faint cry. Slot of us had turned white and started to collapse. Hey, we got an emerald. We barely had time to catch her. After returning to life in a few hours, she told us amazing things. It turns out that Bogart's priests at blue dragonflies to fall into hypnotic trances where they could hear the will of the goddess, demon lord Gugunta, the creator of all pocket kind, in her dream. Latibat fast saw ancient times, how the Bogarts built their settlements, how they raided the neighbors and enslaved the children, how they held bloody rituals to honor bloated amphibian monsters, the roar of their laughter throughout the dark country. And she saw a priest bury a stash of plundered jewelry in his hut rather than offering it to his cruel goddess. In return, the wrathful Gugunta set a horrible plague upon his tribe, and that priest would be their last. Ah. So we turned around to leave the abominable swamp. The flesh eating bush grew quiet and gave way. On the journey back, we were sure to look inside the priest's hut and dig out the treasure that had once wiped out this entire tribe. Okay. Fine. Ugh. Okay. At this point, my dear friends, we played a long time, uh, and I will close for now, and I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see each other again soon, I hope. Until then, bye.